Proudly, we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story as proudly we hail the United States Army. entitled A Night on the Ridge, the true story of Sergeant Augustine Villarreal and three combat infantrymen of the 45th Infantry Division. Our first act curtain will rise in a moment, but first, today you young men of America have an excellent opportunity to learn a trade that will assure your future. The many fine technical schools of the United States Army are training men in such interesting fields as radio, radar, meteorology, mechanics, electronics, and many others you can become a qualified technician trained to do an important job and do it right. For full details about an exciting career, visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. There's no obligation, so plan ahead. Face your tomorrow today. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, A Night on the Ridge. <laughs> In the roar of a modern city, in the clash of steel and battle, a small sound is lost. It goes unheard. Yet now, if you please, listen to a certain small sound. Listen carefully. Can you identify it? Listen again. A simple thing. A cartridge for a U.S. Army infantry rifle, model M1, falling on hard, cold ground. Once more now. One night in Korea, the lives of four men hung upon that small sound. Their hearing, their instinctive fighting urge to survive, reached into black night for it, strove to separate it from the other small noises of wilderness. For no place... Even a battlefield at night, when every man holds his breath, no place is ever entirely still. This is the story of a sergeant, three combat infantrymen, and that small, significant sound. Forty fifth Infantry Division, U.S. Army, on combat assignment in Korea. At a command post, three men huddled in the darkness outside a combat shelter. Corporal? Yes, sir? Night patrol for you men. Oh, yes, sir. Hill 14 on the map, Wesley. Uh, that ridge up on the left, Lieutenant? Yes, uh, a Kaminsky, isn't it? What do we got to do up yonder, Lieutenant? Look around for that commie machine gun post that's been keeping us off the ridge. Planes can't spot it, sir? They conceal it very well in the daytime. Uh, you mean we go up there and leave them shoot at us, Lieutenant? Just locate it if you can. Uh, strictly a clay pigeon deal, sir. Yeah, and there's barbed wire up there, too. Landmines, too. Be very careful. Lieutenant, this advice we need like uh, we need a hole in the head. All right, all right, Ed. Don't be right cold up yonder, seems like. It is cold, Barton. Not real cold, but You're just from Mississippi. Ain't got no blood. Check arms, Wesley. We're all set, sir. Machine guns, knives, grenades, and the walkie-talkie. We get in trouble. Good luck. Polar grounds after the giants lose. Yeah. I mind the time we got caught out coon hunting. In Mississippi? Well, it gets dark even This is there. right at the bottom of the ridge. Just see the top against the sky. Yeah. Where's that barbed wire? Oh, we'll find it. The commie's got a sign on it. Shut up, you guys. Let's go. Okay, gentlemen. If 
deal. Stick close together so we don't get lost from each other in the dark. <laughs> Stop. Yeah, here it is. Barbed wire. You can't hardly see it. Got to go through it, don't we, Wesley? Amongst it, anyhow. On the belly. Landmines, remember now. Ed, you got too big a yap for selling peanuts. Hot dogs, never peanuts, you flathead. On the belly. Stick close behind me. Don't catch your pants on the wire. Everybody's loaded with advice we don't need. Okay, on the belly. <laughs> Wesley. Yeah, yeah, Bart. This way we could crawl right into that machine gun post, you know. Don't worry. Ed? What happened? Landmine. You all right? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Wow. Bart? Bart? There's the machine guns. Along the ridge. Heard the mine. They're looking for us. Bart! Must have been him. Hit a trap wire and set it off. Uh, lousy commies. Gotta find him. Get him back. Hey, wait a minute. Shut up a second. Hey, I hear breathing like. Yeah, I do. Hey, Bart! Hello? Dark. Can't see you, Bart. You all right? I'm checking up. Yeah, I reckon I'm all right. at that time. Sure you're all right, Bart? Well, I don't feel nothing wrong. I reckon I... Hey! Hey, Bart! Brother. Hurt? I reckon when I set off that mine, I got thrown clear over here. A couple of yards or so from you fellas, sounds like. Furthermore and besides, I'm laying right across the trip while I have another mine. Don't move, Bart. Don't move. Ooh, this is some army for advice a guy don't need. I'm not moving, Wesley. I ain't even gonna have any sudden ideas. We gotta do something. Bart, I'm coming over and cut the tripwire. Figure you can, Ed. Oh, no, don't. Oh, why? Oh, don't come near me. You blow us all up. He can cut the wire, Bart. Get you out of there. Listen, I can't even tell which way the wire runs. Maybe the mine's on the far side of me. Maybe between me and you fellas. Oh. Let's not holler at each other or they'll locate us. I got a message for you, Wesley. Yeah? That machine gun post ain't over the brow like a lieutenant thought. It's on top of the ridge, the far end. They can cover this whole slope. And leave them sprayed long enough, they'll find us. Hit the mine, maybe set it off. Or another one. Oh, you think of everything. I'm getting cold. I'm sweating like a fat umpire. I've never seen no fat umpire. You're an oyster shucker from Maryland. Where would you see any umpire? Get an idea, will you? One of us goes back to get help. Help? What help? Whoever comes in after us runs into the same wire, the same mines. Besides, it takes too long. Hey, the walkie-talkie. Must be here someplace. Now you're talking, Wesley. Yeah, I found it. Try to raise up the command post. Patrol to CP. Patrol to CP. Patrol to CP. Uh, nothing yet, Ed. Patrol to CP. Patrol CP to... to patrol. Hear me, Wesley? Lieutenant, look, uh, we're in trouble, sir. We heard a landmine go off up there. Was that you? Barton tripped a landmine, and now he's laying on another one almost. Uh, nobody heard, but we dasn't move. Ah, uh, great. That machine gun post is after us. Hey, look, Wesley, don't worry. You're safe as long as you don't move, and as long as that machine gun post doesn't find you. I'll send help. Now, keep an ear open. I'll let you know. Hey, Bart? Yeah? Remember in training? What? We thought it was tough, the infiltration course. Crawling in mud and barbed wire. Yeah, that's right, we did. Little did we know. Had a soft, Ed. We griped if we didn't get a weekend pass into that little town. Yeah. Nice little town, now I think about it. We shot our face off if we got wet or something. Yeah. 
Remember Captain Emmett? Oh, 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 tough guy we thought he was. He was a crane puff compared. You guys. Huh? Beating your gums. You thought training is tough because you're cream puffs. Who's cream puffs? Ed Kaminsky selling peanuts in the polo grounds. Tough life. Hot dogs. I told you a million times, hot dogs. Barred hunting raccoon in Mississippi. You know what's tough? Going out in oyster boats off the eastern shore of Maryland when it's cold and black in the morning. Man, that's tough. I don't like oysters. Uh, thought maybe them fellas went home. Uh, commies never sleep. Bart, how you doing? Sleepy. Getting awful sleep. Hey, no, stay awake. Bart, don't you go to sleep. Might roll over onto that other mine. Five minutes sleep. That's all I want. No, no, don't, don't. Uh, what's the lieutenant doing, I wonder? What can he do? King Company calling Battalion CP. Somebody there? Right here, King Company, B Battalion. Listen, I need help for a patrol. I need an engineer demolition team. Somebody who can handle barbed wire, landmines, and get three of my men out. What can you do for us? Now, let's meet Sergeant Augustine Villarreal, 45th Infantry Division, 27 years old, of Saginaw, Michigan. His trade, demolition engineer. Trained to deal with barbed wire that rips the flesh, with booby traps laid for the unwary and unfortunate, with dynamite, and with scientific destruction of men and machines. He's a big, calm man with black hair, a man in whom others see a self-confidence so deep that perhaps he himself is unaware of it. Hello, Sergeant. Third Battalion. Hiya. Got Colonel's orders for you, Billy Rail. Well, let's hear him, son. Get a jeep from the pool, go to King Company, CP, two miles along the east-west road. Know where it is? I'll find it. You have to get three men out of a barbed wire setup and landmines and Hill 14. Acknowledge, Villarreal. Sure. So long, son. Up out of that sack, Chuck. Huh? Huh? Come on, a job. Let's get going, uh... son. From us. Hey, Bart, you okay? No. Hurt? You hurt? The bullets is closer to me than it was to you. Hey, maybe they hear us talking. Huh? The mine went off. You know we're here someplace. You keeping awake, Bart? What do you know? I'm still sleepy. Keep awake. Hey, quiet. CP to patrol. CP to patrol. Hey. Yeah. Lieutenant? Still okay, Wesley? Yes, sir. Help's on the way. Demolition team to get you out. Give them an hour. An hour. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Another hour. You are listening to the proudly we hail production of A Night on the Ridge. We'll return to our story in just a moment. We all share freedom, help share its defense. The motto is new, but the call it sounds is as old as the history of our country. Today, as we stand strong and alert against communism, the United States Army is calling for qualified young men and women to join the Freedom Team and become Army Technical Specialists. You will be trained in the latest techniques using the finest equipment, and you'll be building a rewarding career for yourself. For full information, visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. The time is now. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of A Night on the Ridge. Well, what do you figure, Chuck? No more jeep, Sarge. Maybe here, then. We hike. Yep. It's dark. Up and at him, son. Right, a little way up the slope, Sarge. Must be up here someplace. Only where? Let's have the radio. Yep. Hey, patrol. Hear me, fellas? 
patrol. Us? Yeah, you. I'm Sergeant Villarreal. I got a guy with me. He's here, fella. And not so fast. Where are you exactly? Halfway along the ridge. Halfway up. Fine, only that don't help me any sense. A big ridge. Sure is. Uh, how are you going to find us? The commies can't find us. How are you? Well, that's a good question, son. Can't show a light, of course. For the love of Mike, no. Now, wait a second. Chuck. Hmm? Rifle cartridge. Give me cartridge. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Here. Corporal? Hey, Corporal. Right here. Got an idea. Probably lousy. Got a rifle cartridge. I'm going to drop it on the ground. Yeah. If you hear it drop, you can tell me if we're close to you. I'll cut our radio off so you can't hear it that way. And I'll get you again. I'll close the radio, count three, and drop it. Set? Yeah. One, two, three. Corporal? Did you hear it, son? Heard nothing, Sergeant. You're cold. Listen, we'll move forward till we hit the barbed wire. Every so often, I'll check with you. Okay, son? Swell. All right. Let's go, Chuck. The big, calm sergeant and his teammate moved cautiously up the slope at an angle, slowing their pace as they edged toward where they supposed the danger area to be. From time to time, they stopped. Another cartridge, Chuck. Hear it, son? You're still cold. Okay. Any way you guys can hurry? We are hurrying, son. More cautious black yards up the slope. A hundred. A hundred and fifty. Another cartridge. We're getting warm? Still ice cold. Another cartridge. Warm yet? Nope. A man can walk a mile in some fifteen minutes on the flat in daylight. He can run a hundred yards in a relatively few seconds, or the length of a football field in only a few more seconds, even through opposing tacklers. But to cross 250 yards of torn and broken ground in pitch darkness, burdened with weapons, uncertain of direction, with a stake not a touchdown, but the lives of three men, this is not done so easily or quickly. Dropping another one, Corporal. Ready. Close the radio, Chuck. Yep. One, two, three. Open up. We heard it. We heard it. Oh, good. We're getting warm. Chuck, you wait here outside the barbed wire. Right? You going alone, Sarge? Yeah, I only got me to worry about. See you later, son. A walkie-talkie strapped to him, wire clippers in hand. Sergeant Villarreal moves with desperate caution into the barbed wire, stepping over its coils tangled by previous gunfire and slithering under its deadly strand. Fellas? That machine gun was close that time, Sarge. Well, listen, another cartridge. Heard it again, Sarge. Warmer this time. Stand by, son. You bet. Hey, Wesley, he's getting nearer, huh? You heard? All right, bud. Boy, I nearly went to sleep that time. Hey, fellas. Right here. Now, listen now. Well? Cold again, Sarge. Ice cold. I guess I went past you. I'll turn back. You okay? Yeah. Give me a minute or so. Yeah. Hey. I tell you fellas something. Huh? I figured out. It ain't the cold that's bothering me. I'm just stiff from not moving. Good, then you can't move. That's fine. Just hang on, Bart. More dumb advice you don't need. <sighs> I'm hungry. You got some of them peanuts, Ed? Our dogs always told you, Wesley. Corporal. Yes, yeah, Sarge? Listen. I heard it. Sarge, you're warm. Lots warmer. Stand by. Yeah. Some guy. You don't even sound like he's in a sweat. <laughs> This is like Sal Magley. Sally who? Sally who? Magley, Bart. Magley, pitcher for the New York Giants. Ice water in his veins no matter who's up against him. Yeah, I own halves in an oyster boat in Maryland last year. A partner is a fella named Charlie Blaine. Same thing. Never got excited. What are you talking, Corporal? 
Who gets excited over oysters? Oh, storms, you get into storms. I've seen Charlie bring us in. I'd be scared blue, and he wouldn't even worry. I don't mind telling you, fellas. I'm scared stiff right now. I mean scared, and I mean stiff. He ain't far away, Bart. Keep awake. I must be close to the mines. I just cut three trip wires. Three? Dumb luck that we missed him on the way up. Well, listen now. Another cartridge. Yeah, yeah. Warm? Hot. You're getting hot. Boy, don't lose us now. Advice. Advice. Ah, uh, those jakes. I almost wish they'd come down and fight. Not me, boy. Shut up and listen. Fellas. Yeah? Cartridge. Sarge, listen. You're real close. 15, 20 feet, maybe. Hot as blazes. All right. Hang on. Oh, brother. Seems to me like I kind of heard his voice, too. You dreaming, Bark? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> What's the joke, Ed? I just remember the dame I used to know. Oh, a dame now. <laughs> I took a dancer one time. I took her out dancing and see she's all dressed up. And <laughs> Ed, shut your trap. It was funny. It was funny. I... Going off your nut. Tell me tomorrow. Fellas. Hey, fellas. Yeah, right here. You practically heard your voice that time. You're hot, Sarge. Now, wait a second. He's coming. There could be 80 commies around us waiting to jump on us. Fellas. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I heard him good. Off here to my right. I got you spotted. Can't be more than a few feet from you. Let's get out of here. Don't move. The guy nearest me, you, the guy laying on a tripwire. Yeah, it's me. I could almost reach out and touch you. Don't move. Now, not yet. Wire clippers in hand, Sergeant Villarreal feels his way forward. Trained fingers lightly scanning the ground for the telltale presence of landmine tripwires. Hold it. I found this one. Okay, now you can move. Uh, I can't. I can't hardly move. We'll help you, Bart. Don't you two guys move either. Got to circle each of you for the other mines. A leg. An arm at a time. Sergeant Villarreal slithers around each man looking for other mines right close to them. All right, I guess. Let's get this guy up. Yeah. <laughs> I'll lift you, Bart. Yeah. Give me a hand, Ed. Yeah, right here. Sit up first. Oh, I don't feel hardly nothing. Rub him up and down. Pound him, son. Good idea. <coughs> yeah, I feel a little something. Close. Close as jet. They must hear us. Keep working on him. Yeah. Let me stretch my legs out. And hey. Oh, Fellas, tag right behind me. Nose to tail like elephants. Got it? I can feel arms and legs now a little. Bart, you get between me and Ed in case you fold up. Let's go, son. Four hours in stony darkness, helpless to move, helpless to fight back. Now came the long crawl down the ridge, and now, too, came a new danger in those moments of relief and escape from the obvious peril. Other mines, a communist patrol outnumbering them, a gashing contact with the barbed wire, a chance probing burst from the irritated machine guns behind them on the ridge. But at last... <sighs> you made it back. That's a relief. For us too, Lieutenant. Never expected to put an eye on you again, sir. You all right, Kaminsky? Yeah, sure. I lost my uh, cigarette someplace, sir. <laughs> Here you are. Thank you, sir. Oh, brother, that's nice. One thing we did, sir, we located that machine gun post. Good. You men go back and turn in. Comes daylight, I'll send you further back for a rest. Thanks, sir. Sergeant. Uh, yes, sir. Good job. Well, thank you, sir. I'll be going, sir. Oh, uh, Sarge, uh, thanks. Oh, sure. Lucky you got us out. For us, I mean. It's not so tough if you know how. Just the same, Sarge. You knew how. That's the thing. Hey, uh, Sarge. Yeah? You've done all right. You've done okay. Anybody ever tells you you're a bum, I'll tell them what's what. You know what I mean? I'll break their face in. You know what I mean? Sure, soldier. Forget it. Outside, Sergeant Villarreal and his teammate get into their jeep. <laughs> Got a match, Chuck? Sure. I'm 
for the sack, huh? Come on, let's go. <laughs> Americans, every other American is a sacred life not likely to be lost, dearly and desperately to be protected. Proudly we hail Sergeant Augustine Villarreal of Saginaw, Michigan, demolition engineer of the 45th Infantry Division and rescuer of the men on the ridge. Proudly we hail their courage and his. No nation so served can ever fail to win. <laughs> Those who enjoy freedom must help support it. And in these uncertain times, we must remain strong and alert to the dangers that surround us. If you are qualified, you can join Freedom's team by becoming a member of your United States Army. There is an urgent need for technical specialists in every field. You will receive the world's finest training and at the same time, build an interesting and rewarding career. Visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Station for full information. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. Proudly We Hail.